nation against enemies, domestic and foreign. God's constitution, which he will defend, is his law. Amen. Go to Revelation 8, reading verse 5. We have another uh, scene made the presence of God in his, uh, in his sanctuary above. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the earth and cast it where? Into the earth. And there were what? Voices and thunders and lightning and an earthquake. You go back to Exodus, the whole mountain shook. Let's go to Revelation 11. Reading verse 19. Again, what does the Bible say? And the temple of God was what? Opened in heaven. They were seen in his what? The ark of his testament. And they were lightnings, really, and voices, and thunderings, and? And? Mm -hmm. Why? Because the law is there. Let's go to Revelation 16. Let's read verse 18 of Revelation 16. This is the seventh angel. He says, it is done. And there were what? Voices, Voices and thunders and lightning. There was an earthquake that was not since men were upon the earth so mighty and earthquake and so great. Here again we have the same thing. Because why? We're looking into the throne room of God where the commandments are. So way back in Exodus when they were given, nothing has changed all the way down to Revelation which brings us to the end of the world. Lightnings. Voices. Why? Whenever God's law is present. So God gave the law to the Israelites. God gave a lot of things to the Israelites. It's uh, oh, 12 minutes to 8. Go with me to Romans chapter 9. Our subject is what? The best of everything. Romans chapter 9, reading from verse 1. Let's go there quickly. Working your way back from Revelation. Romans chapter 9, reading from verse 1. Paul says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness to the Holy Ghost, that I have what? Great heaviness, and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were what? A curse from Christ. What does that mean? Lost. Paul is saying, if, I, if my being lost can save my people, I'm prepared to be lost. I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. What does he mean by according to the flesh? Right. He meant those Jews who thought that simply being physically descended from Abraham was all that was necessary for salvation. Just physical descent, not realizing that he's a Jew who's one spiritually. So Paul had a burden for Jews who did not understand your physical status as a Jew is nothing. It is the spiritual condition. Verse 4. Who are Israelites? Who's, to whom pertaineth what? The adoption. What's the next one? And the glory. What's the next one? And the covenants. Next one. And the giving of the law. Next one. And the services of God. Next one. And the promises. Next verse. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came? Now, how many things does Paul list pertaining to the Jews? No. Count again. You haven't got all night. Count again. No. We read verses 1 to 5, not 1 to 4. How many privileges does Paul list? No, not like to see the second person to make that mistake. Did you hear the first person? How many privileges does Paul list? I heard it. Eight. Let's go over them. Read from verse 4. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth? Pause a minute. What does to whom pertaineth mean? To whom it belongs. Okay, here's what belongs to the Jews. The adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the services of God, the promises, verse 5, who's at the fathers, and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came. Now let me explain who's at the fathers in verse 5. What Paul is saying, one of your privileges is you are descended from three great men. Who are they? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How is God frequently referred to in the Bible? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Paul is saying that is a privilege. And so he lists the privileges that the Jews have. It pertains to them, 
love the Gentiles. Now the Gentiles are the benefit, but it was not given to them. Listen to me carefully. What's the adoption? That's God calling Abraham. And by calling Abraham, he called his seed. Privilege number one. Privilege number two, the glory. Did they not see God's glory on Sinai? Did they not see that pillar of cloud by day? Did they not see the pillar of fire by night? Was there not the Shekinah glory in the tabernacle? Did they did not see the glory on the ruin Urim and Thummim? The glory of God was with them. And the covenants, did not God make a covenant with them? Yes. And the giving of the law on Sinai, number five, and the services of God, all the sanctuary services detailing how God dealt with sin, and the promises, did not God promise, I'll make you a great nation, I'll make you on bread, I'll give you this land, you'll possess the, sea, the gates of your enemies, all the promises. Whose are the fathers? You came from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and of whom concerning the flesh, in other words, Christ came through you. Physically and literally, Christ came through the Jews. He was a Jew. He wasn't a Canadian or a Indian. He was a Jew. So Paul says, all of these things pertain to my people. Let me ask you this. Which one would you treasure most? You forgot them? Let me review them. You said what, sister? The promises. Okay, the promises. Tremendous privilege, all right? One sister actually would treasure the promises. What would you treasure? Christ came through your line? No? You don't like that? You prefer Barabbas to come through your line? What's wrong? You don't treasure that? All right, well, I can't choose for you. Which for you would be most important? Tell me. One sister says the promises. What do you say? The what? Christ coming through you. All right, yes, my brother. The adoption, God called him. And they call anybody else. The adoption. Anyone else? The service of God. The services of God. How does God deal with sin? Sin is our enemy. We need to know how does he deal with sin. But the Bible tells us which one was most important of the eight. Go to Romans chapter 3. The law. Our subject is the best of everything. Which is the best of the eight? Romans chapter 3, reading from verse 1. The Bible says, what advantage there have the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Now the word circumcision has come to be everything that the Jews treasure, everything Jewish, just circumcision. When you hear the word democracy, you think United States. You hear freedom of speech, you think United States. Circumcision was a word that came to refer to everything Jewish. Are you following me? Amen. So Paul says, what advantage there have the Jew? What makes the Jew Better or different from, I should say, from other nations. What gives the Jew an edge, an advantage, or what profit is there of circumcision? I was in a certain country and I had to go to the embassy. So I got to the embassy grounds, there was a long line of people. So I got into the line. I didn't know what was going on. A security guard came to me and said, Are you US? I said, Yeah, he said, Don't go to that line. <laughs> Just go right to the office. You understand? Now, so. If I had to stay in the same line, I could have said, what advantages is it to have a U.S. passport? Yeah. If I'm in the same line with nonsense. So Paul is, the Jews are asking Paul, what's the point in being a Jew? Is it an advantage? Is there an edge? Verse 2 of Romans 3, Paul answers, much everywhere. What does it mean by much everywhere? What is everywhere? Everything. Everything. We live on how many levels? Physically, you have to eat right or wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Mentally, you go to school. Emotionally, you have relatives and friends. Socially, you have your, uh, financially, uh, spiritually. Paul says much in how many ways? Everywhere. When you're a child of God, you have an edge everywhere. Yeah. And people despise that edge and go to safety. Much everywhere. Then he identifies the one among yes. all. Oracle. What's the next word? Chiefly. Chiefly. Pause. English class. What does chiefly mean? Primarily. Primarily. Give me another word. First. Hmm? First. First. Give me a word or expression. Supremely. 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 supremely yeah. Let's stop on supremely. Primarily, first, supremely. Paul says, you have an advantage in every way, but first 